to preach or to dust your feet? When do you know? Today on Coffee with Conrad. Come see that the Lord is good. Come see that His love endures. Come see that the Lord is good. We're singing hallelujah. Come see that the Lord is good. Come see that His love endures. Come see that the Lord is good. We're singing hallelujah. Yeah, that's Amanda from Holy Desperation Ministries. I did an interview with Mitch and Amanda. Um, on Monday night. They're going to David's Tent on November 3rd, representing South Carolina. It's a 24-hour-a-day prayer and worship event for 50 days to change the nation, a portal of heaven on earth. So check that out. I'm going to be, um, if everything goes well, I'm going to be doing their interview on Friday. So be sure to tune in uh, for that. It's going to rock for Jesus. I'll go into details a little bit more on Friday's show. But just for now, you know, check them out, holydesperationministries.org. They're also on Facebook. Now, the good news is Tune In Radio has picked up the show, so you can share it with your friends. I mean, it's easier than ever to listen to Coffee with Conrad. Uh, I want to thank you guys for listening. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to get on Tune In Radio. So it's real easy now. You can listen on your phone. You can listen in bed. You don't have to be stuck near your computer. Um, you don't have to go through downloads. You can just stream it live over Tune in radio. Rocks of Revelation being poured out through Tune in radio. Now, next week we should be launching a, a new app. I know I mentioned it a couple of times. I just want to drive it home. Everything Conrad Rocks, Rocks of Revelation, will be in one place. Live video feeds, YouTube videos, podcasts, Conrad Rocks News, my random podcast from SoundCloud, which you never know what I'm going to put there, my tweets, and of course, support in Conrad's Comrades page. It's all about Knowing Jesus and making Jesus known and your support makes this possible. I'm Mitch and this is Amanda. We're here having coffee with Comrade and um, we represent Holy Desperation Ministries.org and we're just in love with Jesus and spreading the fire of the Holy Ghost anywhere that people will receive. <laughs> I know it's a little crazy, but I just love doing those little sound effects thing. I know you guys got to bear with me. Praise God it, that you do. Susan gets miffed at me doing all that funny stuff. She goes, you just sound a little silly. I'm like, well, you know, I, I'm i enjoying it, and I people seem to put up with me. <laughs> so there you go. Tune in radio. Now, I was on a prayer walk. And it hit me, I had this vision, uh, revelation type thing, you know, in prayer we're supposed to watch in the Spirit, you know, for the supplication of the saints, and prayer is a, a, it's not a one-way thing. We talked in the Bible study, oh, by the way, the Bible studies we put on the sidebar there, uh, we're doing the Romans, um, we're, we're doing a Bible study on Romans on Monday nights, it's on YouTube, we stream it live, so if you want to ask some questions, Mondays at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time, you can go over there, but... We were talking in, in Romans about how the Pharisee and Luke, you know, we get over there, he was praying with himself, you know, and he was basically, he was a Pharisee, and he was praying with himself. God wasn't hearing him. It's kind of it's kind of funny if you think about it, and it's also very sad if you think about it. So um, I was on a prayer walk, and it hit me that we're after the lost sheep. Jesus said that he hasn't come except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The reason this hit me is oftentimes I find myself carnally, I mean in my mind, thinking, well, the Bible says you're supposed to preach the gospel to all creatures and all that and and then I find that I'm getting distracted by people that are, you know, false burdens. They would be called a false burden. People there that are not sincerely seeking Christ. They're basically just spamming your timeline. Uh, and they have no intention. They're not seeking. So, now, they're not sheep. They're not lost sheep. Okay, This may be harsh, but remember the Syrophoenician women with the demon in her daughter. Jesus, at first, didn't bother to cast the demon out. He called her a dog. She was not a covenant person. She was without the covenant of Abraham's seed. She was not in it. She was not a part of the covenant people. And he said, it's not meat to give the children's bread to dogs. That's where we get the phrase, 
deliverance is the children's bread, and we're the children of God. So then I have to go to a snapshot back in my life where I was praying in the Spirit in my apartment a few years back. Um, you know, I was walking around, hands in the air, praising God, worshiping, and the words out of my mouth came, the gospel, my gospel is to the lukewarm. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm supposed to reach the lukewarm. And the lukewarm in the book of Revelation is to the Laodicean church, and basically it's to the churches. These letters were to the churches. And Jesus was threatening them to spew them out of his mouth. So they're lukewarm, or, you know, what do you think? Lost sheep? Would that be close? So this presents me with a few thoughts that I want to chew on with you. You know, keep in mind things like the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. The world, right? Think of things like proclaiming or preaching the gospel. And think about lost sheep and lukewarm people. And we'll talk about it after this. Well, hello there. This is Mordecai from Oklahoma. Is having coffee with Conrad this morning. Hey, I just want to encourage everybody to tune in to ConradRocks.net. Man, the dude has the power of the word, and he rocks. I just love Vern. He's awesome. Now, think back to the Old Testament, you know, where God was just annihilating the heathens. You know, he even had their sheep and goats killed. What you think about this, that we know that demons can transfer from animals to humans and humans to animals because of the case of the demoniac at the gatherings. Remember when Jesus cast the legion out into the pigs and they ran down the cliff and they all died and that was the first incidence of deviled ham Um, so killing the livestock and all the people in the heathen cultures more likely than anything I'm speculating here but it had some type of a spiritual leaven concept a little leaven leavens the entire lump we're supposed to be holy and separate and these spiritual things, they, they don't seem to be talked about too much. But um, in the Bible study the other night, we're talking about how we're supposed to be circumcised in heart, even in the Old Testament. There's lots of things that don't seem to be addressed, but there are some very spiritual components. There's wizards, there's familiar spirits and stuff like that in the Old Testament. And, you know, why was why did God even want to kill the livestock? Because, you know, there could be some demons transferred back and forth. Now, keep in mind, Joshua, when he was uh, going to go destroy Jericho and all of that, remember, he was told beforehand, do not take anything of theirs. Do not covet it. Don't take it into your tent uh, because you're going to become accursed like it. Let me just read the scripture, I guess. So in Joshua 6, 17, And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein. To the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. Now in 618 it says, And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. And when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. If you remember now, when they tried to um, fight, the one guy, he kept the cursed thing, right? He coveted it, he brought it into his tent. All of Israel was powerless after that, so they couldn't do anything. So there's a spiritual component with the separation between the heathens and the covenant people. Um, Also remember that when Jesus said salvation is of the Jews, remember when he healed the lady with an infirmity, saying, this daughter, she's a daughter of Abraham who Satan has bound this 18 years. You know, she's a covenant person. I'm going to heal her. I'm come not for, but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? He's saying, I'm come for the covenant people that have fallen away. And she was a covenant person, and she was bound by a devil. So you have to realize that the gospel wasn't even pre- preached to the Gentiles till possibly a lot of people speculate it was three years after the resurrection when Peter was on the Tanner's house 
and he received the vision of those three the the sheets with the unclean animals and he didn't immediately say thank god i can have some pork he understood the interpretation via the lord was to preach the gospel to the gentiles but the gospel was primarily to begin in jerusalem and then go out to the world they basically dust their feet of the gospel so the gospel went to the gentiles now in mark 16 5 it says jesus says go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature so this is something that that bothers us. We have a scriptural mandate, just like Paul did. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, a lot of us take on this ourselves. And keep in mind, the original audience relevance of that Mark 16, 5, uh, 16, 15 passage was to the, to the disciples. Have you ever thought about that? Now, I'm not dogmatic in that. I'm just pointing something out because in verse 14, afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not on him which had seen him after he'd risen. And he said unto them, I mean, you know, the Bible says, he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Um, he that believeth is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, something interesting here, the word preach in that Mark 16:15 is keruso. It means to herald as a public crier. As a public crier, not one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Now I want you to think of this. In the old days, um, the people would, the king would, in any way, send an, an emissary. He would send a person to proclaim conditions of peace. The guy would stand outside the wall of the city before they sack it. I mean, they're like, you know, are we going to sack the city and ruin it, or are we going to see if they're going to surrender? Okay. So. Can it be something the king can use, or is he going to have to just kill everybody and, you know, take it by force? So he would unroll the scroll, K. Russo, and proclaim the conditions or terms of peace, right? And a lot of people are hearing this from the gospel today, and they're like, you know what? I don't like your God. I don't think he's whatever. And they just come up with this stuff, and they, they don't understand that they're going to have to serve him one way or the other. Willingly submit themselves to God or he's going to make them submit. So <clears throat> that's basically what I think of when I think of preaching or heralding. John the Baptist was probably doing some type of a dragnet preaching, if we think about it. He went out into the wilderness, and we don't see too much one-on-one. -on -one. He would herald the news of preparing the way, and people would either listen or, you know, and give in, like, you know what, it's pricking my conscience. We know the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin now, so... Um, the Holy Spirit wasn't in the same way back then, uh, but now the Holy Spirit convicts the world. So when John the Baptist decided to focus on the sin of Herod by saying, look, Herod, you took your brother's wife, then John the Baptist was not throwing the dragnet out there. He was focusing on a dude, and he got his head cut off. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we need, to, we need to be judicious somehow. When Jesus says to be a witness, witness to me all nations, the very word witness implies to me that someone asks a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. This is why I'm always saying 1 Peter 3.15. You know, sanctify the Lord in your heart and be prepared with an answer for those that ask the reason of the hope that's in you with meekness and fear. So that's witnessing. They ask you a que question and then you tell them. So where am I going with this? There's a point where I, I want to I say, look, there's a point where we preach. There's a point where we dust off our feet and we move on. We may be trying to fertilize a plant that is simply cumbering the ground. You know, that's parable about, hey, you know, let's put some dung around it for three years. And we tried and whatever, it didn't work. I had an atheist friend that I wanted saved. I witnessed to him for years. He would even ask me questions thinking that I was crazy, trying to trip me up in the Bible. And they didn't realize, you know, atheists don't realize that we have encounters with Christ. It's not just intellectual ascent. It, it's a transforming relationship with Jesus Christ. So they don't believe that we've had that encounter. They think it's some mass delusion that seems to carry down for millennia, right? Now, he was diagnosed with a terminal illness, and, and then he said, hey, you know, this is what's going on. Um, so I prayed, you know, had the congregation pray for him, and he was healed. And, uh, you know, he said he was in remission. He didn't put two and two together, so I don't know. So did I waste my time? I don't know. Now, you know in the book of Revelations, 
um, God is raining down terrible judgments on these people, right? If we go to Revelation 9.20, and the rest of men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their thefts. They just continued to do these things. So God, I get this idea that God just allows the pot, you know that pot they were talking about, the boiling water with the frog? Eventually he jumps out. So, you know, do not forsake the chastening of the Lord because eventually you're going to jump out of the hot water that you've got yourself into. We, you know, we need to think about that. God chastens those that he loves. These people were being chastened and they did not give God the glory and they, they just made up their minds. They said, look, I'm not bowing to the Lord. God is speaking. Are you listening? Hi, this is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Scripture tells us to earnestly covet to prophesy. Right now, at ConradRocks.net, I'm offering a free audio series on hearing God called Hindrances to the Truth. I compiled these lessons from my personal walk with Christ so that I could help others. It's yours free right now at ConradRocks.net. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher. got deeper into prayer because I was starting to struggle with it. And I, I realized that Paul, you know, when he was trying really hard to preach to the Gentiles, but he was prevented by the Holy Spirit to do so. Now, this is in Acts 16. In, in Acts 16, 6, it said, Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. And they were come to Mysia, and they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they, passing by Mysia, came to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now the point that I'm making here is that Paul had a scriptural mandate to preach the gospel to all creatures, right? Now he wasn't one of those 11 in the original Mark 16, 15, just so you know. <clears throat> but it, he did have um, a mandate to preach the gospel. So he heard from the Spirit about a man from Macedonia. And if you remember, he went over to Macedonia and there was no man. He ended up starting a church with women, uh, which you know from reading the scriptures that Paul, you know, he may have had a hard time with that in the beginning, but but the the Lord obviously was a light unto his footsteps, his very next step. He doesn't necessarily show us the end result, right? Uh, because Peter, like when he lowered the, the blankets down to Peter, he says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Ta telling him to eat unclean animals. And Peter immediately argues with him, say, hey, you know, I don't eat unclean animals. And then Jesus says, what I've cleansed you know, don't call unclean, basically. That's what the Father says. So, Paul was only shown his very next step. Then Paul, you know, he com after, after this book of Acts and everything, he starts writing, we start learning from Paul's scriptures that he says to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. The point that I'm making with this whole thing is there is no cookie-cutter solution for who to preach to, Right? All the creatures. But which all creatures are in my domain? You remember Paul said somewhere, you know, I'm going to preach where the gospel hasn't been preached so that I don't build upon another man's foundation. And here in America, that's all we're doing. We're preaching to people that have already been preached to. We're building, a, you know, we need to go out, start here and go out. And that's one of the problems with the church. But why should we be any different? Now, I'll tell you one thing. There's a lot of people in the church that don't know Jesus and I'm saying, you know, well, how do I synthesize all these scriptures? Well, guess what? If Paul had a scriptural mandate to go and preach the gospel, 
to all these scriptures, you know, he's he's saying, well, you know, that's that's for all of us. We're all supposed to preach the gospel, right? But he was forbidden by the Holy Spirit to do so. Well, who's the Lord? God. So basically, Jesus said, you know, he only did the things he saw the Father do. He only spoke those things that he heard the Father told him to speak, right? So we need to have a spiritual relationship even about the gospel. That's why. That's one of the reasons why when I'm about town, I'm like, Lord, give me something. Give me a word, a woman at the well type word. Remember, Jesus, um, he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but he must needed to go through Samaria. He went through Samaria and he met one woman. That one woman saved the whole town. Basically, it was a result. That conversation resulted in a whole town knowing the gospel. This is because Jesus was doing a spiritual thing. Okay? So a lot of us, you know, we don't want to go around wasting our time, wasting strength. Now, I'm not saying it's wasting time to preach the gospel. Don't, don't misread me there. But we want to be efficient in our time by praying about it and waiting for a man of Macedonia to appear to us. You know, we need to have a Paul-type relationship with God, right? So sometimes there's just not cookie-cutter solutions for everything. I get asked questions all the time. What does the Bible say? Well, you know, sometimes sometimes the Bible uh, says more than one thing. Answer a fool in his folly or don't answer a fool in his folly, right? Those aren't two two different commands. Those are two different ways of handling a situation based on the spirit behind the situation. You know what I'm saying? So we need to follow the spirit at all times. Hopefully this ministry has touched your life. Please consider going over to conradrocks.net. Uh, check out all the goodies over there. I have all sorts of cool stuff. Social media, uh, YouTube videos. Um, yeah, the, we, I just put up the... The Romans Bible study. So, if you want to go through through with that, and all those are live too on Mondays at seven o'clock Central Standard Time. Um, I'm on Google Plus, and Susan and I do a Bible study. Sometimes we have a guest, sometimes we don't. So, anyway, God bless you. Oh yeah, check out the support page and also my book, um, "Open Your Eyes: My Supernatural Journey." It's about my supernatural experiences before and after my encounter with Christ. Love you guys. Thank you for being in my life. Check us out on TuneIn Radio, too. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher.